In the past 15 years, temptation has become the predominant explanation for a preference for self-control. And of the many different models of temptation, two of the that have gained the most momentum are the time inconsistent beta delta model of quasi hyperbolic discounting because it's easy to estimate, and Gould and Pessendorfer's model of temptation and self control because it's time consistent. The main focus of this paper is the comparison of these two models in a stochastic income consumption savings setting. I find that the optimal uh, savings plan for the Gould and Pessendorfer model in this setting consists of mandatory minimum deposits that are a function of the distribution of income. This is the same plan that is found to be optimal for the beta delta model in a similar setting. The mandatory minimum deposit framework allows me to precisely describe different situations in which the two models are the same and in which they're different and how. Being able to tell the difference between these two models is immediately useful in applications such as the comparison and design of retirement savings plans in microfinance loans or just for borrowing and saving in general. It will also help us better understand whether or not self-control is empirically relevant. So I find that the two models are indistinguishable if you're given one distribution of income, meaning that take one distribution of income is given and the preferences for preferences over the level of commitment and savings that can be, dis that can be described by the beta delta model, these can be described by the Gould and Pessendorfer model as well. However, if both models are calibrated using one distribution and then you try and use these calibrated models for prediction using another distribution, they may no longer agree. For example, if you were to calibrate both of these models using uh, deterministic income, and then were to use, try and use these calibrated models for a non-degenerate distribution of income, they would continue to agree on the level of savings, but would now disagree on the level of desired commitment, with the, the Gould and Pessendorfer model predicting a higher level of desired commitment than the beta delta model. Alternatively, you can measure the individual's discount factor. This is reasonable because the discount factor has some meaning outside the realm of temptation and also appears in both models under, with a similar interpretation. So using this measured discount factor you can, and a, and a non-degenerate distribution of income, you can make both models agree on either the level of commitment or on savings decisions, but not on both. If you make the models agree on, the on savings decisions, then the Gould and Pessendorfer model is going to predict a higher level of desired commitment than the beta delta model. Um, alternatively, if you were to have both of the models, if you were to calibrate both of the models so that they would agree on the level of commitment, the Gould and Pessendorfer model would predict a higher level of desired savings. The main difference between these two models that's driving this difference is. Um, that the Gould and Pessendorfer model still derives uh, an additional benefit from commitment that the beta delta model doesn't through the, the, the decrease in the cost of self-control. Even, uh, even when the mandatory minimum deposit is not binding, it still decreases the level of self-control or the cost of self-control by decreasing the, the most tempting alternative which would be to consume your entire available wealth. Whereas for the beta delta model, when the, the mandatory minimum deposit isn't binding, it's no longer useful. This means that commitment is more valuable for the, the Gould and Pessendorfer model than for the beta delta model. <coughs>